for a long time, I've seen little things, but I've sort of brushed them off. Just keep on going. You know, I don't know when I first had PTSD, but things have been wrong for a decade or more. Dealing with really nasty situation where bullets flying, I, I functioned really well there, but I didn't function well at the most basic everyday things back at home. Too often I think, no, this is, this is the way you are now, and this is the way you're going to be for the rest of your life. Sure. For myself and the millions who suffer from PTSD, especially when medication and therapy haven't helped, it can feel like you're unfixable. But there could be hope following a new set of trials. Ed Thompson developed PTSD as a fireman. He participated in the first phase of trials for MDMA-assisted psychotherapy. Patients do three sessions that last up to eight hours each. This is your first medicated treatment session? Correct. This is the beginning of some interesting revelations on this video. And are you feeling completely conscious and you're in control and... Yeah. And I felt like I was able to relax even when I was talking through probably my most traumatic memories. I don't think I had seen a dead person until then. The first one was gruesome too. And I just shrugged it off at the time. And I think I was hurting myself every time I talked about that stuff. Yeah, it's a different experience when you're really processing it. This was way, so. only just now coming to this. Thank you for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It was like being able to take a big breath, you know, uh, after being stuck underwater for a long time. Before the treatment, Ed was dependent on prescription drugs and alcohol and suicidal. It, it was terrible. There were nights where I remember just checking to make sure he had a pulse, and then I would go to bed. So what did you think when someone said, there's this MDMA therapy, this could be the thing that helps you? I was terrified. I was like, this isn't going to help you. I was like, great, another thing for him to be hooked on and for him to try to kill himself with because he can't deal with what's going on in his head. And it completely changed his life. A majority of other patients had similar results, including two veterans we spoke with. As within 60 days of coming back from Iraq, I put a loaded Beretta to my temple and pulled the trigger. Without the study, I'd probably be dead right now. I know the taste of a pistol in my mouth. You sit there and you go, this, if, if I can end this right now, is it worth it? My house was foreclosed on. There were times when I had no income, went into abandoned buildings, pulled out copper so I could buy ramen noodles. I never really thought that I'd be doing anything other than living in a van down by the river. And you thought that was it for you? That's what I'm going to do. That's the height of my existence is getting high every day, getting drunk every day, and doing that until my life expires. Therapy hadn't worked. Not at Prescription all. drugs. I've been through worked. all of it. Uh, they threw every pill imaginable at me. At one point, I was on 42 pills a day between physical mm. and mental injuries. At that point, I would try anything, There's, even something yeah. as crazy as ecstasy. I'm here to say that there is new hope for the treatment of trauma. This hope is coming from a psychedelic drug called MDMA. One of MDMA's earliest proponents was Dr. Rick Doblin. His work has been hugely beneficial to veterans and first responders forcing even the Pentagon to take note. I'm a draft also, resistor. I was prepared to go to jail instead of going to Vietnam. But now, all these years later, we're being invited into the Pentagon to talk to them about MDMA therapy for veterans. Rick founded the nonprofit MAPS, the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, back in 1986, a year after the Reagan administration made the drug illegal. We knew about therapeutic use of MDMA from the middle 70s, and just think about how many suicides would have been prevented, how much suffering would have been prevented. It's a national crisis, and in a crisis, people are willing to look at things that they weren't otherwise willing to look at. After 42 years, Rick has almost succeeded. In phase two of the MAP study, 68% of participants no longer qualified for PTSD. There's a major change taking place now in the attitudes, and it's because they're desperate, because the VA has tried everything else. And there's a shifting around the whole concept of prohibition. We have the legalization of marijuana here in Massachusetts, so that's why <laughs> I'm not hiding my bong. <laughs> Even under Trump and Sessions, the FDA was not scared to say, this is a breakthrough therapy. 
Even Fox News is open to the idea because helping veterans may be one of the few nonpartisan issues left. But I think there is definitely a genuine interest in trying to do the best for our men and women that serve. I think that there was a group of psychotherapists who were really, really angry mm -hmm. when a valuable tool was taken from them. And I can't remember the guy who's in charge, Dubrin, I think, or Dub Dubler, I can't think of the guy's name, but he's been pioneering all of this. <laughs> They didn't so, once mention MDMA and therapy. They no, seem they, to have missed the entire point. Did you ever think you'd be doing a pro ecstasy segment on Fox News? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> we spoke to one vet who says he experienced lasting impacts and a whole new way of thinking after just one session. I just went from being anxious to feeling completely relaxed. Things happened and people were dead, and my way of not accepting it was role-playing in my mind about other scenarios on how, okay, if I would have done this and been there, then maybe something could have changed. One of the realizations that I had was I put myself in their shoes. There's no way if I was to die over there, I'd want someone suffering the rest of their life. Uh, I would want them living their life and being successful. So enjoy family, enjoy friends, because I'm still able to. Scientists at Yale are beginning to understand what makes MDMA potentially so effective. I got my brain scanned by two doctors at Yale who are working with the VA on advancing breakthrough PTSD treatments. If we look at all PTSD symptoms together, numbness, uh, arousal, avoidance, uh, flashback, we see that the main issue on average is reduction of connectivity in the anterior hippocampus, this area, and the amygdala as well, which is in front of it. The more numbness they have, the less overall connectivity they have in these areas. Early studies suggest that MDMA and other psychedelics may enhance the brain's ability to recover after traumatic experiences. Maybe MDMA opens a window of plasticity, recreating or re-enhancing the ability for new emotional learning, new social learning. Think about it as you have kind of psychological roadblock and this is, you get this window to overcome this roadblock and have a different psychology that gets you out of this vicious cycle. So what is the potential for this? What is the potential for, for MDMA? There's the real potential for it to become part of the mainstream of PTSD treatment. It's almost like the rules of the game are changing right, <laughs> right in front of us. For now, MDMA remains illegal outside of the clinical trials. To undergo the therapy myself, I had to travel abroad. When I'd started talking to people about this and, and said, yeah, I think I may have PTSD, um, a lot of close friends kind of said, of course you do, you idiot. I, I was never violent, but I definitely had violent urges. Walking down the street, if someone walked too close behind me, I, I, was, I was ready for a confrontation. A colleague who I had a you know, pretty intense trip with to Iraq, and we saw people we'd spent time with literally get their heads and bodies blown to bits in front of us. And, and he said, you just look bored. It's just numbness. Numbness to, you know, real physical danger, numbness to addressing your own feelings about things at all. And even when you get home, numbness to things which should be, you know, pleasurable. As soon as you start thinking slightly about what impact it could have on you and how you might be suffering in some way, you just, just block it out straight away. I'm going to take, I think, 200 milligrams of MDMA and then do a therapy session which lasts seven or eight hours. You know, I think I might think about things or talk about things or face things that I haven't thought about or talked about or faced really ever. Take the pill now. <sighs> How long has it been? A little under an hour. Yeah, I'm not really feeling anything yet. Nothing. 
like I'd, I've taken a placebo um, rather than MDMA. I'm trying to relax into it because our mind and our, our bodies can fight against the effect. That's what I'm saying. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing with everything, which is expecting it to be a disappointment. So I'm thinking of another thing that, that you thought would help that didn't help. But the big theme is just be. Like nothing is embarrassing here, nothing should be judged. But yeah, there's still that feeling of, no, you don't. You know, someone who witnessed their family being killed or someone who was raped, they, they would have it. You don't. What right have you got to feel sorry for yourself or think you need help or think you have a condition? Maybe the thought of allowing yourself to have some healing, even if it's a little. I felt the urge that there was, there was quite a lot of, like I wanted to do, go like this and having to like punch to defend myself, but my hands just breaking, you know, just shattering. Huh. I've had that. But you're even holding your hands kind of. Yeah. Kind of clenched to it. <laughs> I am strong, you know? I am strong. Yeah. I thought I might be strong. Yeah. I wonder if I'm strong. Yeah. I am strong. The fragile hands thing is stupid, you know, but it's just, it's a feeling that's been there for a long time. I thought a lot before about the veteran Tony had lost some friends in Iraq. Mm. Spent all the time since then wondering if he could have done something to save their lives. It was almost like he was talking to his friends and they just and they just said, What are you doing? Like, you know, we want you to have a happy, good, pleasurable, fulfilled life. And and the the phrase that kept on coming up before was just permission. Mm. That really resonated. But I just thought I want to focus on giving yourself permission to, you know, to really give and receive love. Mm. Why is, you know, that, that blocked? I could feel the MDMA taking effect earlier than you did. And I got the sense that you were fighting it. I was. What's your body feel like right now? I felt like a warm, I was gonna say like a warm wet towel across my chest, but it was more than that. I mean, I don't think I've slept on my back. <laughs> I normally sleep, sleep in a ball. I don't think I've even been comfortable and relaxed on my back mm -hmm. for a very long time. Javier, the guy who said to me that I looked bored in Mosul to get to the soldiers that we wanted to film with. We had to run across a four-lane highway where we knew ISIS snipers would take a shot at us. And for some reason, him and Andre, our, our Brazilian photographer friend, went first. And as they were running across, the sniper took a shot. And Javier tripped exactly that second. So for a moment, we all thought he'd been hit. But then, of course, it was my turn to run. And I've had this feeling a few times, like I've, I've run across open bits of land, now knowing we're going to get shot at. I've kind of almost expected the impact. I haven't really cared at all. My heart rate didn't go up, no, no fear, no excitement either, but just indifference, real indifference. There are loads of people who have had much worse experiences than me that would really benefit from this treatment. But that doesn't mean I shouldn't benefit from it too, you know I mean? It would be a very long line if you had to wait for everyone who'd had it worse than you. When I woke up this morning, like, all of the old, ways of resisting and fighting, you know, these emotions 
came back up, but then slowly um, they went down again and I came to appreciate <clears throat> a lot of the things that, that happened and that I said and that I felt. I mean, just, just even, you know, it sounds ridiculous, but even just smiling now feels like a, you know, more of a genuine smile than, than I've, I've been able to make for, for a long time.